Thank you, Leanne, and good morning to the colleagues. And I'm glad to be talking to you once again. Um, I've been to these conferences for the past, I think, two, three years. Um, and I know we are at a point where in, within government and within the sector, it's not only here in South Africa that we are finding that um, we have to deal with some of the negative impacts um, that are associated with, with plastics. And I will be talking to that um, in terms of um, plastic pollution. I'm within the Department of Environment, so of course um, the issues that Dr. Buota talked about in terms of employment are critical. We also want to ensure that as government we create an enabling environment for private sector to thrive. But of course, um, there are basic rights that uh, we want every South African to enjoy. And um, everyone talks about how great our constitution is, um, Section 24. Um, everybody's breathing now. And you, you have some assurance that you are fine with the air that you're breathing. Somebody has to take care of that. You don't even have to think, you know. So environment becomes a, a critical part. Um, we've seen, um, I think Leanne mentioned that we wake up, um, you had to be in touch with uh, plastics, uh, even now I'm holding on to it, you know. So, but we also have to recognize that they are problematic products. I know some people might have a problem with problematic, you know, uh, that word, but um, we have to give it some, you know, name, um, whether we call it prioritized products or whatever we call it, it's, it's bringing a bad reputation to the, the material. We, we just need to face it and act on it. Um, we are also responsible for um, protecting, you know, our oceans and the ecosystems. We've got a vast coastline. So we, we're not like other countries that are landlocked. Um, we, it's about 3,000 kilometers. Um, there's also the blue economy. Uh, we've got a thriving uh, fishing industry. Um, but some of the products... Um, whether it be fishing gear, we, we need to rethink uh, the product design. So um, it's no wonder that um, fishing gear now is one of maybe the elements that we need to look at at an international level. Um, you need assurance that uh, whatever that you, you know, the water that you're drinking from that PET bottle, uh, if people are talking chemicals of concern, you want to have assurance that um, the government, it, not, it might not be environment, it might be the Department of Health, um, they've put you know, systems in place to ensure that whatever food contact that is there, um, you know, the regulatory system is protecting you as a consumer because, yes, you might be working in the industry, but at the end of the day, you are also consuming um, what is out there. Um, so, human health is part of, um, you know, the rights that is a short from our constitution. And we talk environmental health because... Um, Whatever comes in as part of the food chain uh, comes from the environment. So from, from that perspective, it's, it's critical that um, we have a system that protects uh, you as, um, as a South African. We have put up um, a regulatory system uh, to ensure that you are able to enjoy those rights. We have our National Environmental Management Act. 
It has got principles um, that are also guiding our decision making um, with regard to how we manage plastic um, materials. Um, uh, we need to take a risk averse and precautionary approach. Uh, sometimes if the science is not there and so on, um, we err on the side of caution. Uh, that is part of our, how we approach decision making. Um, polluter pay principle, um, it does not have to be the society that bears the cost of cleanup um, of the pollution. We want those that are responsible for putting, um, whether it be products that will end up being waste or creating pollution in the environment, they need to lead in terms of ensuring that um, they provide resources for for the cleanup and even uh, for, for the prevention of um, that pollution. Um, of course, um, I think uh, Dr. Buerta touched on how um, those that can afford um, also, um, you know, they might be wasteful in terms of uh, all the other conveniences in terms of um, material. Um, you know, consumption per capita and so on. But um, our principles is that we need to avoid where there's possible. Uh, we need to minimize, you know, the material consumption. Environmental justice, uh, there I think uh, we've touched on waste pickers. Maybe some of you, when you drive uh, through Houghton, you did come across uh, them. Um, they are part of this industry and um, with regard to the justice that is there, we also need to recognize, and even our researchers have shared the evidence that they are adding value to, to environmental protection. Openness and transparency. Um, if we talk about whether it be chemicals of concern that are used in uh, manufacturing of plastic products, um, we need that openness. Um, we might have trust issues now because not everyone is aware what is being put as part of the product design. For us to be able to ensure that um, there is protection, we are transparent, it's part of our uh, principles that uh, we need to be open about those. Just transition, those that could be affected uh, in terms of changes that might come, of course, we are an emerging economy. We wouldn't want to be worse off with the changes that are coming. Uh, whether it be we need to accommodate the changes, but it should be uh, at a pace where we can accommodate and it shouldn't be that um, we, we are losing in the process. Access to information, we need to be open. And if um, it's uh, based on the public interest, we should be able to to share that information. The reason I'm also, I've also put the global and international responsibilities must be discharged in the national interest is because we are considering a, a multilateral environmental agreement focusing on plastics and we do have a plastics industry and uh, of course South Africa first in terms of uh, what is being uh, considered at an international level. We have identified problematic um, products, plastic products uh, in the past. I think um, in the, one of the culprits that have been in part of the pollution is our carrier bags. And, and I think it's over 20 years now that um, SARS has been collecting the plastic bag levy. Um, it's not ring fenced, it's part of the economic policy of the country. Um, and of course, um, there are competing you know, interests in terms of what the government has to um, you know, prioritize in terms of other sectors that would need the flows of some of these revenues. So we are mindful of that. We've put uh, in place um, standards worked with the SABS uh, thickness and so on, which is part of product design. So 
If we are thinking that there are more problematic plastic products, it means we will then have to come in to regulate, uh, and that is with the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, uh, together with the SABS, and the National Compulsory uh, Specifications, uh, the regulator there. Of late, we've put in extended uh, producer responsibility regulations, which is uh, part of uh, ensuring that uh, we operationalize polluter pay. It's still early stages, but um, we, we are saying we need uh, the private sector to come to the party in terms of ensuring that the products that they put onto the South African market they become responsible to the end of life management of those products. And uh, we, the, the, some of the producers that are running those schemes are part of the conversations today. National waste management strategy, and of course, um, this responsibility, it's not taking away from the fact that as government, we also have a role at a local government level to ensure that um, there are basic services in terms of uh, refuse removal. And, and our reality is that not all households are receiving um, uh, waste collection services uh, every week. So we do have backlogs in terms of um, access to services. And of course, that tax base that was referred to uh, we, we still have fiscal challenges, um, uh, amongst other challenges, in terms of ensuring that uh, municipalities are able to deliver on those responsibilities. Zooming into the international context now, um, of course, we've seen that uh, the plastic pollution has been a problem at, at a national level, but because we also share you know, our environment, whether it be our oceans, our air, you know, we've seen that, um, you know, this pollution now is crossing boundaries uh, and we needed to come together, you know, as nations of the world. And in, in 2022, uh, at the United Nations Environment Assembly, there was a decision taken to say, we need a legally binding instrument at an international level to respond to, to the plastic pollution problem and to end the plastic pollution. So from, from that resolution, um, an intergovernmental negotiating committee was set up. Uh, South Africa is part of that committee. Um, already there have been four sessions. Um, there is a a draft text of this instrument on, on the table. Um, it is very complex. There are a lot of areas of uh, divergence. Um, although we are left with one session um, of, of this committee, um, there, there are still um, you know, many areas with you know, divergences. You can imagine that different countries uh, have got different realities in terms of how they are responding. And when we come to the global level, we, we need to find each other in terms of then what would be the minimum for all of us to, to tackle uh, plastic pollution. And we are just left with about 60 hours of negotiation. So um, even our chairperson is trying to find a, a middle ground, you know, a zone of possible agreement on, on some of these matters. So there will be a lot of work that will be done even before we get to the, the formal session. A lot of informal sessions that are currently happening all over uh, the world. So uh, even with different sectors, whether it be our scientists or our civil society organizations, uh, industry, everybody's currently very busy to find um, these areas of convergence. I think for, for our uh, primary plastic producers, uh, because as South Africa, we, we are a country that has got producers like, you know, Safripol and, and Sasol. Um, what has since happened is that um, that decision from UNEA, um, it put forward that we need to have a life cycle approach 
in our response to ending plastic pollution. And, um, you know, this life cycle um, consideration, well, you know, depending on where you are, I think, you know, the science, you can't take anything from it. All of us have got a sense of what do we mean by, by life cycle, but because it's a negotiated process, depending on the implications, um, it has been one of the the contested areas in terms of whether we need to be having uh, this element of um, polymer production as part of the elements of the instrument. And I think for, for us, um, we are saying, of course, you need to be managing what you can measure. And if you are not able to uh, put what polymer goes out, um, you know, your material balance, uh, you know, your material flow, you might not know whether you are winning or, or losing this uh, battle with regard to plastic pollution. And um, our ISO, um, you know, the standards body has also uh, put forward, a, you know, a definition that has been adapted and it has been considered, which is what um, we are saying um, needs to be considered. Of course, plastic pollution, um, pollution is brought, um, you know, we've got all this environment media that we need to uh, consider in terms of the impacts that are put, uh, whether it be emissions um, across the entire life cycle, we are saying um, we need to have that consideration in terms of uh, plastic pollution not only about the environment, the physical environment, I think we've already mentioned, you know, uh, open burning, whether it be dam sites, um, which are not necessarily engineered landfill sites that are there, um, that consideration need to be there. But of course, um, the human health implications in terms of some of the chemicals of concern that are used in the production, it's something that we want um, that consideration to be there. And I know um, others will say, but we already use uh, regulations that are uh, taking care of food contact, you know? But remember, at a global level, you want assurance that everybody is using, um, you know, the same protection measures because we've talked about import and exports, it means we are living in a global, you know, community. So you, your product doesn't just end here in South Africa. You are wanting to also export to the world and we also want to have um, imports coming in. So we want um, the protection measures to be at a global level to assure everyone the same level of protection. We don't think that others that are living in a specific, um, you know, location in the world deserve far much protection than us here in South Africa. So um, that is, um, you know, the basis of approach that we are using. Of course, um, there are different proposals when it comes to uh, primary plastic uh, uh, polymer production. Um, um, of course, there's an option of not necessarily having text on that element. It's one of there. But because um, also not everyone is a, a country that produces or that has got producers of uh, polymers, um, you know, whether this measure should be at a global or at a national level, it's, 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 it's a consideration. And even within that, um, consideration, others um, are thinking of maybe having targets, you know, as part of this, which are not necessarily acceptable uh, to, to others because of uh, growth implications and so forth. Um, we have also um, come to a point where there's also a non-paper that has been also uh, shared with us um, last week uh, from the INC chair, and uh, there is no mention of uh, primary plastic polymer there, it's, it's supply. Um, and of course, 
there has to be an understanding of what does supply mean, you know. So the definition we will go back to also uh, get clarification uh, from from the chair because um, he will still need to share his thoughts on wh what what are the boundaries of of the supply such that we we are clear from them. Of course, there are other um, you know proposals uh, wanting to put a fee um, linked to um, production and, and this fee, um, it's proposed that it needs to be imposed at a polymer, primary polymer production level. So um, we as South Africa for one, has al we already have uh, EPR, which is part of um, you know, taking care of that value chain, of course, um, the way we've implemented our EPR is, uh, is that, you know, certain plastic products, that's where we are, um, you know, prioritizing because we are worried about the end of life of, of those. Um, in this case, we know that not all countries have got EPR, so um, maybe, you know, the proposals are based from the fact that they would want to see it, but because at an international level, we also want to ensure that uh, sovereign rights of um, countries are, are not um, interfered with, um, and we also have issues of a free market economy. We would want to ensure that um, the engagement is at that level. And the, the propo proponent of this uh, proposal, what they've indicated is, um, you know, 60 to 90 ton, um, uh, you know, USD um, levied on uh, the, the, the polymer product uh, producer. So, and we've taken note of um, the concerns uh, regarding, you know, the economic impact of, of such. And, um, and there are also views um, that were meant to also mitigate against this to say, um, we could consider a threshold, you know, a trigger, and uh, taking into account that we wouldn't want, you know, developing countries to be affected by this. But at this point, um, you know, the the scientists have not put in the necessary, you know, evidence uh, and data to for to enable a consideration of, you know, the implications uh, based on that that trigger threshold. So um, that, those are some of the issues that we, we need to um, reflect on. Of course, um, plastics as a sector has been prioritized as an area for growth uh, for, for, for South Africa. And, um, you know, I think the last slide that um, Dr. Buerta had was on employment. So, and, you know, that plea to say we need to ensure that we are creating an enabling environment for, for, for employment. Uh, it's, it's, it becomes key that um, we also reflect on this government uh, priorities, uh, one of uh, inclusive growth and, and job creation, which remains key given uh, the poverty uh, challenges and the high cost of living that we, we had. So looking forward in terms of, okay, then what become key considerations for us um, as, as you, know, uh, you know, Team South Africa? Um, and, and that is cutting across. It's not only government, but also from uh, industry, um, our civil society and, and so on. So first and foremost, uh, given that we understand that uh, as a country we are producers of uh, primary plastic polymers, um, we need to, which we are already doing, you know, disclose our, our volumes um, in terms of um, what we are putting out there. I know we we do consume some part, and some parts are, uh, we are it's for export, so um, we just need to be um, you know, transparent about that. But linked to that, um, we've already 
um, seen that um, as part of our production, we are not only uh, looking at uh, virgin, we are bringing in re uh, recycled. Um, yes, we need to be clear on you know, how we are targeting to increase that recycled. And that would mean that we will have efficiency across the value chain in terms of ensuring that the plastic waste that is generated comes back and becomes part of um, the product design and we are able to improve and that promotes circularity. Chemicals of concern, we need to be uh, part of ensuring that uh, the criteria that is applied, we are able to be transparent and to ensure that uh, those um, chemicals that are used in a, a plastic production are clear, everybody can see. Of course, we have this uh, notion of problematic uh, products. What are we doing about them? Uh, product design, we've already started to regulate some. It means we will then have to um, broaden the scope uh, given some of those, we've seen evidence, some of uh, these products that actually leak, leak into the environment, not even your waste pickers are going to pick them because they are, not, they are of low value and it's not making economic sense. So we need to rethink, uh, do we really need these applications? Uh, can we do without them? And we, we, we design them out. Of course, we've not seen much of reuse, refill, that portion, uh, and if you look at our hierarchy, um, reuse is above recycling. So we need business models that are going to ensure that we are more in the reuse, and this also looks into how uh, our retail sector is, um, uh, you know, set up. Uh, the products, uh, offering the services that they provide, we want to see changes there. And the reason why we're talking about this, others are already starting that, but because we want to ensure that the playing field is leveled, it needs to be regulated such that everybody can be uh, going in the direction. Emissions waste management is key, um, and we need to work with local government. We are not saying... Um, Waste services needs to be out of it, but we need to ensure that um, we are able to close uh, the leakages. EPR, we need to uh, assess um, the effectiveness. Um, there have been glitches there and there. It's not working optimally. It's early stages for us as South Africa on a mandatory level, but we can take lessons, and that's why we are also supporting EPR at a global level, but with uh, you know, countries imposing that. We want a standalone financial mechanism, even for any work that needs to be done at an international level, we don't want that to become a burden for, for South Africa. So all this, we want just transition. It means for the enabling activities, all of us needs to come together at the global level to see for those that need to transition, and need assistance, which is usually the developing countries we need to provide for that. I thank you.